I'm going to show you how to make the block for carving this fish. Each mark on this gauge is one inch, so I'm going to set it for three inches and cut my blocks. I'm making 20 and I get two out of each of these blocks. I'll split them down the middle. So I found some three-quarter inch material that was wide enough to get two fins and I cut that at three inches also. I'm going to draw two on each block. That way I can hold on to it when I'm scroll sawing it. And then the little scrap pieces, I'll put the side fins. Now I'm going to resaw each block roughly into thirds and then I'll sand them to thickness later so they're all exactly the same thickness. After sneaking up on the size, I check it with a micrometer. I'll double check later on to make sure that the slots are correct. After sanding them to the thickness, I double stick tape them all back together in stack of maybe three or four. And then I'll cut two at a time. Side pins go in the little corners of scrap. After resawing my fins into three separate pieces, and sanding them to thickness, I double stick taped them together. And here I'm pulling the tape out from between. I stuck them together so I could cut three or four at the same time. You might notice that the grain goes up and down so the fins are strong at the top and the bottom. The block happens to be twice as wide as it is thick, so I'm just going to use another block to mark them. It's the center and then I'll split them with the bandsaw blade because the bandsaw blade takes very little material away. The X I'm putting on one end is for the lathe center. The other end I'm just going to leave it square because I'm going to put it into a chuck. Here I'm removing one I just finished and I'm going to check it to see if the shape is approximately what I want. Now I'm going to chuck up a new one and go ahead and mill it down. As I mill it, I'm going to rough it with a roughing gouge. I'll check it to make sure that it rounded up and then I'll take a skew and square out the end so I have a shoulder to run that curve down to. The shoulder is approximately 1 8 inch away from the jaws. It keeps my skew from going down and hitting the jaws as I cut. Here I'm removing some of the burrs that were left from the lathe. I want those off so the block will sit flat against the table and the fence. I put a pencil mark X to show which side I want to put against the fence. I can't put the bandsaw side against the fence because I'm going to double cut them and it'll come out the different sizes. Notice that my push stick has a block on the top to hold it down as well as the hook in the back to push it through. I'm going to keep my fingers on the top and if it would kick back my hand would go onto the fence not onto the blade and always bring them back around the blade never over the top because if it slipped out of your hand dropped onto the blade it would fling it back at you. And in case you're wondering, no, I did not have any kickbacks. And whenever you're going to work around the top of your saw, always let your blade come to a complete stop so you can test your fits and do the things you want to do. Never do it with your saws running. After you notch them, they'll be ready for some bandsaw work. I'm going to cut a mouth in the top and I'm going to cut the block off the bottom. I left the block on the bottom only so I could hold them, pushing them through the table saw. When you bandsaw the mouth, keep in mind that the mouth has to be 
the right direction so the fins go up and down and the mouth goes back and forth. I'm going to draw it out so I get a vague idea. I want the cut at the top to be a lot longer than the cut at the bottom. So I'll just sort of pencil it out so I have a rough idea where to cut. Now again, I want to check my fit, so I'm going to let that bandsaw blade stop because I want to check the fit in front of the camera and I don't want it running while I'm working for the camera. After the final check on the fin, I did later go back and cut them a little shorter so they fit a little bit better. All right, now it's time to draw. So you can draw out whatever kind of fish you want. I like bluegill, so I'm going to make him a bluegill. That's a funny sound for a bluegill. Maybe my kitty is sitting next to me, helping me do voiceovers. Here's a little trick. If you want a completely round eye, you can use a hole punch and chuck it up in your drill and then use it to cut the stop cut for the eye. Then after you get the stop cut you can go ahead and round it out and carve in the eye. And on the rest of the carving, I usually cut the lines that I drew in with a veiner to get a stop cut going. And then I use my bench knife to carve scales and a few little differences in elevation to give him some form. And I like to draw around the fins and then pull them out you can carve them separate, but if you draw around the body, you'll know where they go into the body, and then you can just carve up to that point. And thanks for watching. Please leave a comment if you have any ideas or suggestions.